Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. This year instead of doing the Stash Buster quilt blocks, I decided I would do some vintage quilt blocks. And basically what I was doing last year, they're all traditional quilt blocks and some are vintage. Um, but the intent was to help you get use up some of your stash to make these blocks and then uh, put them into a quilt. This year I'm just wanting to explore some of the vintage blocks and uh, learn how to make them. So uh, one of them that I always wanted to do was a Dresden plate. Now in the past I have quilted several Dresden plate tops. One was one I got at a flea market that I needed to take apart and requilt. Um, and then two of them were plates that I bought and they I needed to I applied them onto a background and then made a quilt out of them. But I've never made a Dresden plate from scratch. So that's what I want to do. And I want to show you my test plate and this is it. There we go. Uh, this is made out of um, a charm pack and it was called Bada Bing and I think it was um, me and my sister designers. I'm not real certain about that. It's, I've had these um, for a while. Um, and I've got some of those and then I have some of my reproduction 1930s fabrics that I want to use up. So I'm going to combine all of those and make uh, three blocks to make a table runner for my dining room table. So stick with me and I will show you how to make a Dresden plate. So um, I cut five inch wide strips of fabric and then I've got this Dresden template that my husband gave me for one of my Christmas presents. This is by Easy Quilting um, and it works real well with five inch squares, your charms. So um, just wanted to show you how I'm doing that. Um, so when I went through my 30s fabrics I just pulled out things I thought would coordinate well. So I have I have some I have some reds and I have some um, blues and I've got this print that has some yellow in it and I have another one that has a little bit of yellow in it so um, just do that you know with any fabric you have just find fabrics that you like and then use your ruler and you're you're good to go now this will take I'm making these blades five inches long um, and you need about a 14 and a half inch square for your background fabric and that makes a good sized Dresden here, which let me measure that. I really haven't even measured it. It is um, 11 and a half inches long. And then for the center, I um, made myself a circle template out of cardboard or out of cardstock actually. And um, then I machine applique this on with a decorative stitch here. If you can see the stitch. But anyway, I did that. Normally I hand sew these on, I've, I have in the past, but uh, I was kind of in a hurry. So anyway, uh, with this ruler I'm going to use my 5 inch mark and line it up on the edge of the fabric. And it should come to the end of your charm, which mine does. And then I'm going to cut this piece off. I've got two charms stacked here and I'm going to turn it around so uh, it makes it easier that way I don't have to cut upside down I don't do well with that so um, and then align the ruler against that edge I just cut and make sure it's lined up here and down here and then cut again and this gives me two charms and I've got a little thread there there we go and then flip the ruler around so that the 5 inch mark is down at the bottom. Line up the edge already cut and then cut again. So I get uh, two charms out of, <laughs> so I get two blades out of each charm. So um, and then each plate needs 20 charms. So I wanted to do three three plates so I need um, 60 
blades so I'm gonna count these up and make sure I have enough and then I'll start sewing on them okay so now it's time to sew the points here and it's real easy to do just fold it in half lengthwise and have your raw edges even and then we're going to sew from the raw edges to the folded edge back stitch a few stitches and then it's done so I'll show you that get a little closer and you will find instructions um, on how to do this from several different people and they may all tell you a different way to do it this is just what I found has worked best for me and I really don't even know whose method this is or if it's anybody's method it's just what works for me so I'm going to stitch all the way across back stitch a few stitches and then it's done and then you can just chain piece all of these together um, the next thing I do after clipping my threads is I'm going to clip this corner off just right there some people do this some people don't um, if it works for you not to do that then that's great then I'm going to flip it out and I'm going to fold that seam to one side and you will see some people will press that seam open and then I have a point turner and I'm just going to use that to um, get that point out and on this one my seam is wanting to go to my left there I want this seam to go straight down the blade so I'm going to manipulate it so that it will and uh, give it a little finger press and then I'll press it with an iron so it's pressed right down the center and then I have a nice point on the blade so I'm just going to chain piece all of these together and um, when I get them all done then I'll start pairing them up sewing them together into groups of two and then sew those groups of two into groups of four so we'll have five sets of four and then we'll sew those five sets together so I'm going to keep on sewing and um, then I'll show you the next step okay I have all of these pressed now and I have sorted them by color and I th think this went really pretty quickly I think it took less than an hour to um, press all of these and turn them and all of that that goes with it here's all my different colors and different fabrics and there's more here than what I need to make three um, plates so now I need to sew these together in sets of two and um, so to do that I need to kind of have my colors picked out so I'm going to play around with these and decide how I want these plates to look and um, see what we come up with okay so I've got my layout planned the next thing I need to do is sew them together in units of two so <clears throat> so I'm just going to take two and um, lay them right sides together so what I want to do is to match up this edge here I'm not worrying about this end because this is going to be covered up with the center circle so I want to match these up so I just want to sew with a quarter of an inch all the way down so I'm going to start here about a quarter inch down to three eighths or so and back stitch and then come down because I don't want the loose threads to be out here. I want them to be hidden within the seam that'll be underneath. So I'll adjust the camera and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you want to pin these you can, but what I'm wanting to match up is just these, the points here on the sides where I'm doing the seam so right here I want to match those up and I'm going to start from that end and work down but I'm going to start in about a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to back stitch and then go forward just like that And I will chain piece all of these together but I want to show you the reason I'm doing it this way and 
okay the um, the threads the loose thread tails they're coming off the side now if I had started here they'd be coming off this end and that would this would be a weak point here so the fact that I started here and then back stitched and then came forward that's stronger now because of the back stitching and then these threads I'll just clip them off here and um, they won't be hanging out here at the top when I open this up they won't be hanging out up here and then that would be something I'd have to clip off or tuck in and uh, I didn't want to mess with that so that's all there is to putting these together so I'm gonna sew these in pairs of two instead of going you know all the way around the the uh, plate so back stitch them all done I'm gonna cut them apart and then um, I'm gonna lay them out as I cut them apart so I don't get confused as to where they go and um, then I'm gonna press them and then we'll start sewing them together now when you press these seams you can press them to one side or you can press them open a lot depends on how you want to quilt these blocks if you're wanting to stitch in the ditch then you'll want to press them to one side if you're not don't care about that then you, know, you can press them open um, just um, if I can get that open you can just press it open just like that And we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and press open. Now my sample block plate I pressed all to one side and I had them all going in one direction so there's not a lot of bulk in any one place and this is all nice and smooth in here so that works fine too so it's basically is just a you know your preference what you want to do I'm gonna press these open to see if I can see any significant difference between pressing them open and pressing them to one side okay so everything is in place so far so now I want to sew them together in groups of four okay so I'm gonna match up my folded edge first and do the same thing. I'm going to start down about a quarter of an inch back stitch and then go forward and then I'm going to go ahead and lay these out um, so that um, I don't get confused again okay so I have this one all pressed and the seams are pressed open um, what I see that may be a problem is that these seams all overlap and that's going to cause extra bulk here um, so if that bothers you you may want to press your seams all to one side and so it's you know it's laying flat enough um, but that this way you just got more chance of these seams flipping also this one you can see they're all pressed to one side mm. to me this is less bulky than what this would be and um, so I personally prefer this method as opposed to this one so it's just a personal preference whatever you want I think they both will work fine um, next thing we need to do is after I get all the other blocks done or the plates done is to do the circle Okay, now I need to make 
these circles and what I have I have a couple of pieces um, that I cut to five inches square which is way bigger than what I need um, but that's kind of how the fabric turned out so I'm going to take my template and this is um, the backing from a piece of um, well from a scrapbook paper pad this is the back from it so it's some heavy cardboard um, but it's thin now you could put two pieces of cardstock together and do this or just one piece if you want and I'm just going to draw a circle on the wrong side of the fabric and I'm using a pencil because I don't want the I don't want the markings to go through the fabric but I want to be able to see them so this is good if I used um, an ink pen or um, some of the kind of marker it may show through so I can see that and I'm going to go ahead and trim this down I want about a half of an inch from the line of, of fabric is about all I really need so I could have cut this at four inches and I would have been fine okay so I have my circle and I have my tracing on there and now I'm going to um, do my basting stitch so I'm going to start from the right side I'm going to pull the thread and now I'm going to hand baste all the way around and I'm just going to take about a quarter inch long stitches this is just a basting it's not imperative that they all be the same size this is just what I'm comfortable with and I'm leaving a little tail there on that side the stitches and then just keep on sewing all the way around once I got all that basting stitching done I ended on the outside the right side of the fabric and now I'm going to pull those threads to gather the edges of the circle around the cardboard circle and the trick here is to get those nice and snug and to hold them in that position and tie the knot so this is where it would come in handy to have an extra person there that they can help you with that and put their finger on the the thread for you and hold it snug but um, I didn't have an extra person around so um, I just worked with it until I got it so it took a little bit of um, finagling but um, I did get that nice and tight and you can see that there and I've got my first little knot tied and then I'm just I'm just doing a double knot so I'll just do another knot here and get that tied down and secure and then once that is down um, I'm going to trim off those threads and then I'll bring the iron over and I'll press that and I'm going to press from the edge of the circle in towards the center and uh, just want to give that a nice crisp edge and it also helps um, iron those pleats down it'll flatten them out a little bit so there's not a lot of bulk so I'm just taking my time and uh, just turning it around the circle as I go now this is something that you don't want to use a metal circle like the inside of a lid or anything because that will get really hot and you'll burn your fingers so you want um, cardboard or um, something um, heat resistant template plastic would work good too also so I press this from both sides now and um, let it cool off here for a second and then I'll remove the cardboard and I'm not going to clip those threads I'm just going to ease that cardboard out and um, leave the basting stitch in you can take that basting stitch out if you want I just didn't want to have to mess with those um, little pleats coming loose again so now it's all ready and I'll give it another quick press and it'll be ready to go now if you want to you can also use some spray starch on there to help 
firm it up and give it a little bit more body but if you're using a good quality fabric like I have here um, you probably really won't need that but that is something else that you could do so now the circle is all ready to be appliqued on to the center of the Dresden plate okay now I need to put the centers on and what I'm going to do is glue base these on and then I'm going to do an embroidery stitch to secure them um, so I'm going to take this one that doesn't have anything on it at the moment and I'm going to take my circle and just kind of eyeball it at this point and then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to pick a point which I'll use these two and I'm going to measure out from that point and this is at four and a quarter and on this side I'll measure and that is four and a quarter so let me see if I've got the same measurement here and this is a little bit more and I'm going to turn over here and measure that side and I'm going to go ahead and pull this I'm going to go to four and a quarter because that seems to be the right measurement so I'm just going to hold that down and this is Elmer's school glue it's nothing special um, but this is a starch product so it works well for fabric and I'm just putting it along the raw edges of the blades you can see right there just put a couple dots of glue all the way around and then I'm going to take a hot iron and I'm going to press and that will dry the glue and set it and that will hold the um, circle in place until I can get the embroidery stitches on it so there we go it's not falling off I'm going to turn it over and hold some heat to that so they're all ready to go now I just need to do the embroidery stitch to hold the applique down and um, I'm going to use a blanket stitch on this on the original one I did do um, number 26 on my machine on the Singer patchwork machine but I'm just going to do a blanket stitch which is number it'll be 21 number 21 on the patchwork machine okay now since I've got this glue based it I don't need to use any pins it's just all ready to go so um, I'm going to go ahead and punch in what I want as far as width uh, my width is at 3.0 and my length is at 2.0 so get that lined up a little better and then here we go and just turn it as I'm stitching I uh, am all done with my centers and now I need to put the plates on a background square so what I did first was to measure the um, diameter of the plate and it measures 11 and a half and I measured it in a couple of spots to make sure that um, I was being accurate and it's pretty good so I don't want to put this on a 12 inch square because that would just give me like a half inch on or a quarter inch on each side so I cut out a 14 and a half inch square for each one so I've got four squares here and these plates will go right in the center and they can be hand applique on or you can machine applique them now I normally hand applique my Dresden's down um, but you can do whatever you want 
and to get these centered what I'm going to do is to make some registration marks so I'm going to uh, fold this in half and then just finger press it down and then fold in half again. Now you can do this with your iron but I didn't want any creases that were going to be hard to get out. Um, it's not going to matter a whole lot because a lot of that will be covered up by your your plate but um, like on your outer edges those will show and this gives me some kind of some guidelines to use. Um, everything is pretty since there's 20 everything is perpendicular as far as even numbers here and on um, you know from side to side and these points will line up right across from each other so if I've got this blue check along this line and the red check along that line then I know uh, that I'm centered except I'm over just a little bit so I just need to slide over and there I know I'm in the center so I'm going to go ahead and pin this down and uh, get it secure and just do it in a couple places to begin with and then I'll put more pins in it as I need to so here we go so that's pretty good now if I'm going to machine applique this I'll go ahead and take it to my machine and you can use any kind of stitch you want you can use a decorative stitch you can do a blind hem stitch you know whatever you're comfortable with and then if you're going to hand applique it then you would use an applique stitch so just it's just whatever you want to do and for me since I already started this with a machine applique I think I'm going to machine applique this one down Okay, I am almost done with this. I've got one, two, three, four more blades to go. And um, it's come along pretty well. I'm just watching where the needle is landing and turning as I need. I'm going to um, put that back there. I'm going to go back to a straight stitch and we're going to lower it to 0.5 and that will pretty much just lock the stitches in place for me. all done so it didn't take too long so here is the plate all appliqued to the square so I think that's looking pretty good so three more to go and then I can put these blocks together and um, decide if I need to do anything else to them like a border or sashing or something I hope you enjoyed this video on the Dresden Plate Block and hope you'll give it a try. And the next time I'll show you how I finish the table runner with the binding and the quilting. And until the next time, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. 
For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.